In this problem from the first test, section three, problem number 13, you're asked to find which of these terms is equivalent to this expression. And the easiest way to do this is to set x to be equal to zero. If you set e x to be equal to zero, this, each of these terms will simplify to one over one over two plus one over three. And then you can simplify this to get one over five over six. And then you can write this as six over five. And now all you gotta do is you gotta check each of these terms by setting x to be equal to zero. So if you set x to be equal to zero, all the x terms are gonna to go to zero. And so this is gonna be five over six. The second expression is gonna be all the x terms are going to be set to 0 and it's going to be 6 over 5 and so this is our correct answer. In this example from the seventh test section 4 problem 19 you're given a formula here and you're asked to find the inverse formula in other words what is w in terms of a and all again all you got to do is set w to be equal to zero once you set w to be equal to zero you get a to be equal to four plus zero divided by 30. and all you're going to do over here is try to check which of these terms will give you four over 30. so a is four over 30 and then you're going to check if w is equal to zero what is this value? So 30 times 4 over 30 minus 4, and that is equal to 4 minus 4, and that is equal to 0. And that is indeed checking out. So the first one is the correct answer. In this, in this topic of back solving in test 9, section 3, problem 11, you want to find out which of these x values are satisfying this equation and what you can do is you can start with problem solution a first and try and see if zero works out so let's plug in zero and see here so you've got zero over zero minus three and zero over any number is zero so this expression goes to zero and now this expression here is equal to 2 times 0 over 2 and so that is equal to 0 so this ties out so 0 is indeed a solution now that 0 is a solution you can just immediately cancel out these two options and all you all that remains to be checked is if 2 is an answer or 4 is the solution so let's plug in 2 inside over here you've got 2 divided by 2 minus 3 and so that's 2 over negative 1 and so that is equal to negative 2 this is the left hand side and the right hand side you can see is positive because you've got 2 times 2 which is 4 divided by 2 and so that is equal to 2 so this doesn't really tie out and so you can cancel this out and immediately you've got this with the answer you can check you can put in 4 inside here and you'll see that's actually the answer 4 divided by 4 minus 3 and that is equal to 4 so that's the left hand side and then the right hand side is equal to 2 times 4 divided by 2 and 2 and 2 cancel out and so you've got 4 and so it does check out here now we are approaching the concept of back solving with two variables you've got two variables here x and y and this is of course from test 7 section 3 problem number 3 all you're going to do is plug in each of these values inside here to check if this works out. But here's the trick to do it correctly. You've got x to be equal to y minus three. You can write this as x minus y is equal to negative three. In other words, the difference between the x coordinate and the y coordinate should be equal to negative three now. So let's see which of these solutions actually has the x minus y to be equal to negative three. Here you've got x to be equal to negative 3 and y to be equal to 0. So this could be a possible answer. Now, in the second solution, you've got 0 and 3. So 0 minus 3, x minus y, 0 minus 3 is indeed negative 3. So this could be a pos possible answer. And then you've got 6 minus 
negative 3. So that's gone. And then 36 minus negative 6, and that's gone. So now you're going to have to work with just these two. So let's plug in the second solution here. So in this equation, I'm sorry, let's plug in the first solution in the second equation here. Uh, you've got negative 3 here as x, so negative 3 over 2 plus 2 times 0, and that is clearly not equal to 6. And so you got this to be your correct answer. Now here's a simple trick to solve linear equations. You've got these two linear equations, and this is from test 3, section 3, problem 6. You've got four solutions to this, and you actually would want to solve this in a usual scenario but here's the thing whenever you're asking x minus y or x plus y all you got to do is just try and add these two equations up so when we add these two equations up you see 2x minus 3y plus 3x minus 2y will give you 5x minus 5y and the right hand side will be negative 14 plus negative 6 and that's going to be negative 20 and now you can immediately see there's an x and a y term here so you divide by 5 on both sides to get x minus y is equal to negative 4 and so that's immediately your answer this is another great way to solve quickly one of these problems where you've got x in the denominator usually you've got x in the numerator now this problem is from test 3 section 3 problem 5 and all you got to do is you got to invert what is in the numerator to the denominator and other and the other way around so you can write this equation as x over 5 is equal to x plus 20 over 15 all i've done is move this x to the top and 5 to the bottom and same for the right hand side and now your equation is greatly simplified all you can do is you can cancel 5 and 3 here and so you've got x is equal to x plus 20 over 3 and then you can simplify it further you can just bring 3 to the top here you got 3x is equal to x plus 20 and now you can if you want you can substitute it you can also solve it algebraically here to get 2x is equal to 20 or x is equal to 10 and so this is going to be your answer now this is an interesting percentage problem usually for percentages and this is by the way from test 1 section 4 problem 20 you've got Alma buying a laptop computer at a store that gives a 20% discount so anytime you see a percentage problem you set the original price to be a hundred dollars so if she bought the computer at a hundred dollars and you got and she got a 20 percent discount which means she the price of the computer after the discount is 80 dollars so you got a hundred dollar original price and you got 80 dollars after that and then she the total price she paid to the cashier was p dollars but that is including an eight percent sales tax on the discounted price so you've got an eight percent tax on this so what is eight percent of 80 that's going to be 8 over 100 multiplied by 80. And then you can use your calculator right over here to get the answer. It's going to be 6.4. And now you add this value to 80 to get $86.4. And note that this value is given to be P. Okay, this is the value of P. Now all you got to do is substitute this value inside these expressions to see which of them check out to be 100 and you can check that p over 0 0.8 multiplied by 1.08 in other words 86.4 divided by 0 0.8 multiplied by 1.08 is going to give you 100 the rest of these values are going to give you some other numbers and so this is going to be your answer because they're actually asking you the original price and note that we took the original price to be 100. 